Greetings from the Nerd Cave. This is Stan Gibalisco here. I am going to demonstrate for you the discharging effect of a capacitor through a voltmeter that has a high internal resistance. Right now, the voltmeter is off so that it's disconnected entirely from the circuit. We have a 6 volt battery and I'm going to connect it across a 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor for just a few seconds thereby charging the capacitor. Now that capacitor uh, being such a large value will hold that charge for a long long time if there is nothing connected across it and right now in effect there's nothing connected across it. So we should see about 6 volts initially. This is a 10 volt scale. Read the scale from 0 to 10. Starts out at actually it's almost 7 volts. That battery is a good strong battery. Now watch as the needle declines. Uh, it decrements in a it's what is known as a logarithmic decrement that means it starts out rapidly and then decays more and more slowly now you might wonder well how come uh, that uh, device is discharging through this voltmeter uh, shouldn't it hold the charge all the way up to near seven volts indefinitely and the answer is if the meter were perfect a perfect voltmeter with infinite internal resistance, then yes, it would in fact stay up there indefinitely, although it, even then it would decay gradually because the capacitor itself has a certain amount of internal resistance uh, that's not infinite. It's very high, but not infinity. Let's just touch that up there again, and we recharge it up there again to 7 volts. Now let's turn this meter off right at 5 volts. Now we've turned that meter off at 5 volts and we're just going to wait a little while. Got a magnifying glass down here in the nerd cave that I sometimes uh, use to look at uh, specific details. The breadboard that you see, by the way, goes along with a book called Electricity Experiments You Can Do at Home, which I wrote and it, uh, that book will describe for you a lot of experiments. Maybe I'll make some videos to go along with that book. Uh, some of the more interesting experiments in that book might lend themselves to videos. Okay, I think we've waited long enough. Now, if we had left the meter on, it would be way down around 2, maybe even less than 2 volts. But notice, it's still at 5. That's because the capacitor did not have the effective resistance of this meter connected across it during the time that we had it off. But now that it's on again, uh, 2 volts now, you read the bottommost scale there to see the voltage on this uh, scale. So that's how a capacitor works. The larger the, in, the uh, resistance connected across the capacitor, the more slowly it will discharge the smaller the resistance across it, the more rapidly it will discharge. But actually, now that the meter's off, and I again replenish the charge, I should be able to come back here tomorrow at this time, turn that meter on, and see it pretty close to 7 volts. Because that capacitor will hold that charge for a long, long time. That's what capacitors are for. And in fact, the largest capacitors known, called supercapacitors or ultracapacitors, can hold a great deal of charge for quite a long time and can actually provide enough current to run a small device such as a radio or flashlight for several minutes. Also, your smart meter, if you have a utility smart meter, has an ultracapacitor in it that will preserve its data in case there is a power failure. Uh, these supercapacitors, unlike batteries, will work even when the temperature gets far below zero Fahrenheit, which can happen sometimes in 
this part of the country, Dakota Territory, United States of America. That concludes this little production. Hope it made some sense to you. Das Vidanya from the Nerd Cave.